that we are very, very excited to have. Adam Hawley here, celebrated guitarist and composer as well. He is in his studio in Los Angeles, and uh, we're going to get a chance to chat with him, and he's going to play for us as well. And if you are familiar with him, you know what I'm talking about. He is absolutely incredible, and he's on fire right now. There's a multi-city tour he's going on, and uh, his, uh, you know, his music is just literally blowing everything away. It's really extraordinary. Let me tell you a little bit about his background. 10 number one hits, 65 plus dates per year. Adam Hawley has burst onto the scene as a celebrated and innovative artist, composer, and band leader. Originally signed to Maurice White's founder of Earth, Wind, and Fire label, Alimbo Music, Adam's first two albums, Double Vision and Just the Beginning, spawned an incredible six number one hits. An unprecedented feat for a, a new artist, too. He followed that up with Escape, which included the 2020 Billboard Song of the Year. That's right, to the top. Now totaling nine number ones. Adam sets out with an exciting fourth album, Rising Up, which uh, just came out. And it's really incredible because it features Steve Cole, Vincent Agala, Julian Vaughn, as well as Riley Richard and Cat Hawley, anchored up by the thrilling first single, Rising Up, as well. Really, it's fantastic. He's also played at a lot of the fests, the jazz fests, everything from Seabreeze and Catalina, Burks, Rehoboth, as well as Jazz Fest West, Java Jazz, Cancun. Newport Beach Jazz Festival, that's legendary. On the Dave Cos Cruises, Mallorca Jazz Fest, Napa Valley Jazz Getaway, as well as Jazz on the Vine, and many, many more. Adam has also been a guitarist to the stars, appearing with a who's who list of incredible, fantastic, talented performers in a wide variety of genres, too. He's worked with Dave Cos, Jennifer Lopez, Brian Culbertson, another great artist, too. The incomparable Natalie Cole, Brian McKnight, and American Idol, just to name a few. He holds a doctoral, uh, doctorate of musical arts from the University of Southern California and currently teaches at Musicians Institute at J.B. College and Saddleback College as well. As I mentioned, he uh, he has so much music out there, and you got to make sure that uh, you get some of it into your collection if you haven't had it before. Uh, he's going to play live. You're going to get a good sample. Here is that uh, album that everybody's talking about, Rising Up. We're so excited about this, and uh, we congratulate him. Billboard number one with this as well. Yep. Let's get down tonight with Vincent and Gala, which is fantastic. We congratulate Adam on that. And here's this, too. Look at all these. Look at the tour dates. <laughs> You thought you were busy? You thought I was busy? Look at all these dates. We got them here in a little window of opportunity, uh, which is really cool because, again, he's on tour. Uh, as I mentioned, look at this, you know, four on the Billboard charts and uh, so much incredible music that he pumps out. And you know what it is? He loves what he's doing. That's the key. He loves what he's doing, and uh, he's incredibly talented and skilled at it. And uh, he's joining us here live from his studio in Los Angeles, California. Gang, if you'd like to comment again during the show, we invite you to do that. We have music, incredible conversation. As we say, we don't do interviews here at the Gym Masters Show. We do conversations, really, truly conversations here on the show. So let's welcome uh, Adam right there with his guitar in tow <laughs> from his studio in uh, beautiful Los Angeles, California. Adam, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. All right. <laughs> What's going on? Thanks for having me. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. I like your studio setup. Nice and comfy there and got all the equipment, the guitar ready to go. Nice, yes, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, this is where it's at. This is where you'll find me most of the time if I'm uh, yeah. not on the road uh, working on projects. Um, I'm personally in between projects, but I'm uh, doing a lot of production for several artists and finishing up uh, uh, an album for one great piano player and uh, a single for another great guitar player. So, uh, yeah, keep them busy. You know, uh, you and I were chatting before we went live on the air. You grew up in uh, Oregon. And there you mm -hmm. are, like, so 20 years in, in L.A. Back home in Oregon, what was some sources of inspiration for you to want to even go into music where you come from a musical family was there always music playing in the house 
Yeah, you know, it's interesting. My parents weren't really musical. They didn't really uh, play any instruments or sing. But the one thing is they had a uh, a record collection. They had a few vinyl and some cassettes as well. It, that was the era back then, uh, late 80s, early 90s. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's what captivated me. I found their vinyl record collection. There was some magic to that, definitely, spinning those records. And uh, they had... Uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Brothers Johnson, all these great records. I remember buying Thriller uh, at a Goodwill for like $3 or something and spinning that. Uh, and then they had um, a ton of cassettes as well, all the Time Life series. So uh, I was definitely into oldies, definitely into the music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And uh, somewhere in there, I just picked out the guitar, and it and it captivated me. And uh, just wanted to play and i kept begging my parents you know can we uh start some guitar lessons can i get a guitar and uh i think my uh, mom was a little bit concerned about you know her son growing up as a guitar player and um you know all that comes with that sex drugs rock and roll or what have you so uh you know so she said well let's start with the piano you know if you play piano for a year then you can play the guitar so uh, I started classical piano at uh, age eight and stuck with it and then started guitar at nine. And and uh, yeah, and I, I stayed with both of those. And thank goodness I did. Now I play probably more piano than guitar just with all the work I'm doing in the studio. So uh, definitely laid a great foundation and, uh, you know, just went from there. When was that decision to move to L.A.? Because obviously L.A. is uh, the place, as is Nashville and New York. But, you know, you've made L.A. your home and you're so immersed in the city and in the music scene. When was that uh, the choice for you? When did you say we're going to pack up and move south? Yeah, well, I had had fortunately some great experiences touring um the Northwest. I was in a bluegrass band when I was 12 years old. And then I had my own um, blues rock band when I was in high school. But I just had a feeling of that there was something more out there. And I also yeah. wanted to challenge myself and go to one of these big scenes and honestly, just see if I could cut it. You know, uh, you know, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, you know, a la yes. Frank Sinatra. So um, being from the West Coast, L.A. was felt very natural it was a two-hour flight uh, you could drive it in a day if you if you really pressed it. it's an 18 hour drive if you uh, really go for it so yeah it, it didn't seem like too much of a stretch um the weather wasn't a uh, was definitely a factor too i remember going to santa barbara in uh, december uh when i was maybe 15 and in up in the northwest it's very rainy and cold and yeah. you're having your 100 days of cloud cover and we went to Santa Barbara December. It was 75 degrees. We went to the beach. We were hanging out with our, our family. And I was like, you know, I think Southern California <laughs> might this be seems like home. <laughs> a good option. Yeah. And then I really lucked out. I can't take credit for it. Um, I knew I wanted to move to L.A. I had applied to many schools. But, um, you know, I really lucked out. USC, of course, is a, is a fantastic um, institution. But it just so happens that it was – Ground Zero for um, guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Jackson Jr. went there. Lee Rittenauer went there. And then a whole mm -hmm. host of maybe not household names, but gentlemen that have been working at a high level in the industry for decades. The faculty there was incredible. So I really fell backwards into that. And, uh, and that really laid the foundation for what was to come. That's incredible, huh? So what would you consider, you know, with that development of, you know, understanding of music and the education and developing all that, what was one of those really important opportunities for you that sort of opened the door? You know, you look back, you're like, okay, now if that didn't happen or if I didn't meet that person or that collaboration or that opportunity didn't happen, maybe some of these other things might not have come my way as well. What would you say would be one or two things when you got to Los Angeles that were pivotal to sort of accelerate things for you? Well, it was actually a pretty slow burn. Uh, I was working the entire time, but it was more so in town. It was uh, a lot of weddings and, and top 40 and, and church and uh, teaching, uh, which all of that was great. I was fortunate to stay really busy. But uh, I walked into school one day. This would have been at the end of my master's. So this was April of uh, 2008. 
and I walked into class and uh, had my guitar and was about to set up. It was a, a class uh, where all of the uh, graduate students were together and we would all perform and work on repertoire. And the teacher, his name was Pat Kelly. Um, as soon as I walked in, he said, hey, Adam, you know, I got called for this tour. Uh, I can't do it. I, I don't know if you're interested. And I said, oh, you know, what is it? You know, he said, well, it's with the Manhattan Transfer. And I said, well, of course I'm interested. Definitely. Let me know. And so Manhattan transfer. At, yeah, that's a yes. <laughs> yeah. So at, at first it, it, it was looking like I was going to go and fill in. And then eventually they decided to have a whole audition, a cattle call where they had maybe 15 guitar players there. They were also looking for a bass player as well. So 15 guitar, 15 bass. So we went and um, auditioned and actually, you know, the artists were actually there, which that doesn't always happen. So um, I lucked out, you know, I had the second time slot and me and the bassist um, along with the band and the singers, it just, it just worked. And I, you know, I could, and everyone was very positive. Everyone was like, man, this sounds great. Uh, but yeah. you still don't know. You still expect to go home and someone else gets it. And uh, and they called me, I think, the next day and uh, got the gig. So I immediately went from working around town, uh, like I said, top 40 weddings, et cetera, and then straight to our first show was at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., in front of 5,000 people and um, no rehearsal. So uh, that no was definitely, rehearsal. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> a, right uh, into the fire. So yeah. you said it started, the, everything started with a slow burn, but then you were thrown into the fire. <laughs> well, as soon <laughs> exactly. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, and, and as soon as that hit, I, I've been really fortunate with really only a, a few exceptions. I've been, it's been wall to wall busy since um, we started. I think we went out in May, May of uh, 20, uh, of 2008. And since then, it's been 14 and a half years, just a nonstop. So I feel fortunate for sure. Absolutely right. Yes. And you've done work, you know, independently, of course. And then you've collaborated with a lot of other giants in the industry, too. Um, what's that like for you to have the opportunity to collaborate with some of these others, the Dave Causes and these other folks that are recognized names as well? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I, I was with the transfer. That was my longest tenure. Um, I was with them for four years and then started doing some dates with Natalie Cole, which was incredible. Um, then yeah. I got the call for um, Jennifer Lopez. So I actually had to leave both of those gigs. I was I was the current member um, for both of those um, artists and then switch over to uh, the, the world of pop, you know. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but in terms of like collaborating, you know, my first project that ended up coming out in 2016 and everything that preceded that, it, it was, it was, um, it really helped, um, pollinate what was to come in terms of my solo career. Um, a lot of the artists I worked with, especially in the world of jazz, you mentioned Dave, also, uh, Brian Culbertson, Gerald mm -hmm. Albright, all of these incredible players. I was at one point playing guitar for them. And then later on, um, ended up uh, being able to get them to be on my records, which is uh, incredible. I feel so fortunate. And um, certainly with the first record, it didn't hurt to have some co-signers. You know, who is Adam Holly? I don't know, but he's on Maurice, or he's, yeah, he's on Maurice White's label. He's uh, on, on that first album I had, Brian Culbertson, Gerald Albright, Eric Darius, Michael Linkton. Uh, you know, all uh, and huge groove, all household names in the contemporary jazz world. So you have all uh, their music in the collection for sure. <laughs> yeah, cer certainly didn't hurt. So, yeah, all of that was part of the path, you know, and, and if at any point I hadn't really come with it and taken their uh, material and their show seriously, then, of course, you know, they, they wouldn't have been interested in in appearing on my records. But um you know, fortunately, uh, they said yes. And, uh, you know, that that was a, a piece of uh, getting the ball rolling for sure. I was mentioning in the introduction that you've worked on a lot of different genres of music. But mm -hmm. what is it about this particular genre that really speaks to you, jazz and smooth jazz? Yeah, well, it it hit me uh, like a bolt of lightning. I was 16 and just gotten my license. I was driving. I was in high school. And the drummer in my band gave me um, 
uh, that was the era of the mix CD. So he burned a CDR and put a bunch of uh, music on there. And it was quite an eclectic mix. I still I mean, do was, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. You know, uh, thinking back on to that, right, you know, there was Bee Gees on there. There's all sorts of stuff. But he put Breezin by George Benson on there. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I was 16. I, I just just hadn't come across him yet, shockingly. And I, I immediately I was like, what is this? I need more of this. I need to dig deeper. And so that was the initial light bulb of wow this is incredible it's funky but it's sophisticated it's got um you know it's got um r&b grooves but then jazz sophistication and and vocabulary and it was like man this is everything that i like you know yeah, it's like yeah. you know it, it was like kid in a candy store man there's there's a music that combines everything that i'm interested in right and then later on you know i ended up getting into norman brown and and uh, Kirk Whalum and Gerald Albright and uh, Will Downing, a uh, great vocalist that's kind of contemporary jazz. So, um, yeah, you know, that was fascinating to me. Then when I moved to L.A. and started going to college, one of the professors there, he was the chair of the department, uh, Richard Smith. Um, he was outperforming doing music from his records and he had had several hits. So going to see him perform around L.A. at the at the Hotspot Clubs also was infectious. And um, and so, yeah, so I started thinking about, man, maybe I should make a record. I started on it in 2005 when I was a junior in college. But to me, the test is if you put your song or something you're working on, uh, if you put it in a playlist with existing music that um, is out there and is vetted, you know, it's charting or it's on the radio. Uh, does it feel like it belongs? You know, when you come out of one of those songs and then to yours, what does that feel like? Does it feel like there's a dip or does it feel like it's in the ballpark? And then similarly, when yours goes off and another one comes on, is it is it a smooth transition or does it feel like uh, you get blown out of the water when, the, you know, when a Brian Culberson track comes on? So right. uh, in 2005, my music was not uh, up, up to par. And so I spent 10 years not, Every day, I took even a few years off, I would say, in there. But I really went out and apprenticed and learned from the greats. And um, that's really what all went into that first record because it was important to me that I didn't want to have a first record that was like, oh, okay, that's nice. You know, that, that, it's, it's his first record. He'll, he'll get it on the next one. It's like, no, I wanted to make a statement immediately from the very first record all the way down um, track one through uh, 11 on that album. And uh, fortunately, that was the case. My very first single was uh, was number one for five weeks. And uh, and then we've just been, you know, just been rolling from there, fortunately. With the first two albums being Double Vision and Just the Beginning, yep. which spawned those incredible six number one hits, which mm -hmm. really is an impressive feat for a new artist, huh? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's unusual out of the bat to, um, you know, there, there's so many great artists that have been around 30, even 40 years that are still releasing music and still, um, you know, doing great and hitting the top of the chart. So I felt really fortunate uh, that uh, I was just so well received and um, you just never know because there's tons of projects, you know, everyone's got a project, everyone's working on an album. You release yeah. it, you know, you, you get you get a now in the age of social media, you get some likes, you might get a few people to listen to it, but often that's more or less the end of it. But um, for it to just take off. And then the other thing that was pretty incredible about it was that when it first came out, I was on tour with Dave Cause. The tour was ending in June of 2016. And so right around the time that it, it went number one was the end of the tour. And then I didn't have another tour. I didn't have someone else I was going to go off and play guitar for. And so the timing was pretty impeccable in that I saw, well, I don't have something else going on. So let me pour all of my energy into this and see if I can, you know, double down on me being an artist. And so I started working the phones. I started working on booking gigs, going down that path. Um, and in that first year, I was able to do about 30 shows, which was, uh, which was pretty good for, a, you know, the first year. And, um, so I really credit that kind of, um, 
you know, it was another kind of moment that I fell backwards into because if I had had another tour, I would have gone and done that. And then more yeah. than likely my solo material would have been, I would have kept doing it, but it would have been a thing on the side. You know, I'm a guitar player to the stars and oh, by the way, I've got a project and maybe I'll do a show here or there. Um, but it was the unemployment that uh, forced me to, you know, dig deeper. And, uh, and I'm, I feel fortunate that I did because only a few years later, um, 2019, uh, the summer of 2019 was the last time that I've been out um, in support as a guitar player for someone. So since the summer of 2019, I've just been strictly doing my solo shows, um, and uh, and that's Is been that amazing. Due to the pandemic situation, because everything was closing, or was it tied to that well, as well? Well, so the so no the 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 last thing I did was a Dave Cause tour in the summer of 2019, and then I jumped off of that and did my own shows all the way up until the shutdown. So that was about nine months. And then, um, yeah, of course, I had um, almost exactly a year off um, uh, mid, mid, uh, mid-March 2020 until yeah. April of 2021. But as soon as April hit, I've been extremely busy since April of 2021. Uh, last year, I did 45 shows in only um nine months and then this year is going to be 65 so um so yeah i mean that yeah, was incredible. definitely <laughs> it, it's i feel it's it's amazing i feel fortunate yeah i mean it was definitely an adjustment for sure um and the thing actually that came out of the shutdown was that i've always been producing for other artists but it was always around three to five people at any given time and it, it was kind of on the side and then um in those moments where everyone's eyes were on social media in especially in april and may i started putting up videos of of uh, prospective tracks that i was doing and i would just do a little caption hey you know if anyone's looking for uh, material for their next record hit me up here's a track i'm working on and one track in particular i put that up and 10 people called me just off of that one post i put it on facebook and instagram and and um and so i i went from literally i went from around five people to 15 that i was working mm -hmm. with simultaneously and these people i'm doing anywhere from one song all the way up to a full album and everywhere in between and uh and so ever since that moment since um may of 2020 production has become actually the busiest thing for me and uh and it's great i really enjoy it it's so much fun just being creative every day every day i get up deal with some emails and yeah. then open up the computer and uh, start working on some music i mean it's it's an amazing thing um and uh i've been fortunate to build these tools in terms of music production and mixing i was applying them to my own projects but you know you only can release so much of your own music you don't want to flood the marketplace so so i have some free time and able to use those tools with these other artists and uh it's mm -hmm. like a magic trick you know we'll we'll start off with nothing then we'll have a concept okay here's a groove and then here's a melody and then next thing you know there's a song that didn't exist and i get a kick out of it every time it's amazing how that happens right i mean yeah <laughs> i mean i know people who they can listen to the sounds of like a subway or just certain sounds oh, of the rhythm of just yeah. life and hear certain beats and certain things from just things that we come across in daily life say oh there's a little bit of a thing there i'm gonna write that down <laughs> yeah <laughs> how no, do you get inspired sure. what inspires you to do what you do i, I haven't gotten that ethereal yet uh yeah. maybe maybe one day the um, ocean tide and all of that i know yeah. i know no i haven't gotten into that but um uh, honestly uh it, it 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 does hit me at all times of the day though and that's why well i always have my phone with me so the voice memo app is so integral mm -hmm. um i'm always putting little jotting little ideas in there like if i only have my guitar at a certain yeah. point i'll i'll right. just play it real quick into the voice memo but often i've i've actually gotten more kind of regimented and typically when i'm working on music i'm in front of the computer which I prefer because I've got all my instruments around the keyboards. I've got my bass. I can program some drums, play some guitars. And the other thing too is um, a lot of the great artists I work with uh, often will have material that they've started on and then they'll ask me to take it the rest of the way and then we'll collaborate in the writing process and then I'll finish the production. 
So that's been a lot of fun too. I mean, I just finished an eight song album for, um, for a saxophonist, uh, Doug Wilson, and he had all of the uh, demos. Uh, they all existed already. Mm-hmm. So it, it was, it was my task then to um, help with the writing process and then, you know, take them, take them over the top. Um, so it's a little bit of both. And, uh, you know, I enjoy both sides of it. If it's an idea I started or, if it's when they uh, did, but that's always fun too, because um, inevitably they'll have a different way of thinking in terms of groove and chord structure. And so I got to sit down and learn, okay, where are they coming from? And then how am I going to um, add to that and ultimately support the artist and make sure that they shine. Uh, so it, it's, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's so, well, it's obviously working with everything charting and had the phone ringing, which is really so cool. I'm so a lot of phone calls, a lot of phone calls (laughs) and a lot of blood, sweat and tears. You know, it doesn't come easy. And uh, I'm sure, you know, you ever look back and you stop and sort of pinch yourself like, wow, you know, this has really this has gone in a direction that I had always hoped, maybe even exceeded what I would have dreamed. No, hundred percent. I mean, I definitely feel incredibly fortunate because it's it's exceeded what I had thought. Uh, for instance, me putting out a record, um, it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like, you know, it might be um, one facet of my career as opposed to, you know, now there's two main facets, which is my artist career and then production. And the same thing with production. I'd always been working on music and making tracks for since I was you know, 12 years old, I had a little eight track that recorded a zip disc and I I would make records on that. So, uh, but it's funny, you know, everyone makes tracks in a sense. So I, I would mention to people here and there, Hey, you know, let me do something for you. You Oh, sure. You know? And so once my album, that's the thing, you just never know. Once my album took off and then especially when the second one hit in 2018, people started calling like, man, you know, congrats, you know, really enjoy your music. Um, who did that for you? And I say, well, I did. You know, I, I produced it. Oh, okay. You know, who wrote it? Well, I did. Okay. And who mixed it? I did. You know, and then so eventually it became, like, a matter, <laughs> yeah, it became a matter. Yeah, it became a matter of shop. <laughs> yeah, they said, well, oh, can you do that for me? I said, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. I can take it and just you know, and then shine the light on you as opposed to me. Um, but everything else is the same. I'm I'm using you know the same. Uh, drummers that I use or bass players and and I play all the rhythm guitars and the keyboards just like you know or or get a keyboard player just like I do on my records and just take the same process okay you know we've got a system that's working and now let's apply that to you know somebody that uh, has been working on their project so uh, no I I feel super fortunate and um, honestly the the best thing about especially the last uh, I would say year and a half or so is that um less driving you know that's been yeah. really cool so yes, right you know, now uh, the only driving i really do is, is to the airport you know you got to do that and then if i'm home i i play at church so um i've got to drive yeah. in a couple times for rehearsal and for the service um but otherwise uh you know and, and then i teach one day a week at saddleback college down in orange county but yeah, i used to drive that Oh yeah. And, and that's so much fun too, you know? Um, but, um, you know, I used to be driving into LA five, six, seven days a week and just really racking up some miles, 30, 35,000 miles a year on my car. And, uh, now, and and then the traffic. Yeah. So now the car, um, you know, is getting a lot, you know, it's getting a little bit of rest. And, uh, but the main thing is that, like I, like I had mentioned a few minutes ago is just the ability to be creative every day, all throughout the day is just so much fun. So I, I really enjoy it. It's incredible. Yeah. And we were talking about, you know, some of the material as well. Tell us about escape. Yeah. So that was my third album, uh, came out in February of 2020 and, uh, I, uh, as you mentioned, the first two came out on Kalimba Music uh, label. And so I decided to set off on my own. I uh, uh, went indie on this record. And so, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, I put a lot of work into all of them. But this one, I really felt like, okay, I need to have a a, a winner here. You know, I don't want to have a drop off of my uh, first two albums. And right. uh, I was fortunate. You know, I had... Um, 
two number ones off of this one, and one of those to the top was Song of the Year. It was the most played song in uh, the format um, on the Billboard chart for all of 2020. Um, so that was pretty cool. I had a few near misses. I I think I'd finished three on the year end chart and and maybe um, seven at one point. So that was definitely very cool. And uh, and the the one downside was that uh, 2020, I was going to have an extremely busy touring career. And so I decided, you know what, instead of instead of I always get some CDs and then I reorder them. Right. And then this was the first time I'd done vinyl. So I was very bullish. I had ordered, I think, uh, you know, uh, a, a ton of vinyl and then double the any previous CD order I'd ever done. And uh, unfortunately, then the shutdown happened. And mm. then a week later, FedEx shows up and it's box after box after box being delivered to my front door. And there's no gigs. Everything's been canceled. <laughs> I've seen all and this so, stuff and uh, anybody so need holiday selling, gifts, stocking I stuffers? <laughs> I know I'll be selling uh, copies of Escape uh, till the end of time, but right. um, but no, that's while well, other people uh, were stocking up on toilet paper, you were stocking up on CDs of Escape, <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. And then it's funny by the time I started touring again, I only had maybe three months before my next album came out. So, yeah. you know, I, there, I didn't really have a, a great sales window, but aside from that, that it's really more of a humorous, humorous story because everything else about that album was just a, a, a huge success. And it was also my highest charting album on the billboard yeah. chart. It peaked at number four on the album chart. So that was definitely um, exciting as well. So, so, uh, so yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I had some great guests on there. I had uh, Rick Braun on the yeah. uh, title track. Um, yeah. Jeff Ryan was on the song that was song of the year. Uh, Marcus Anderson was on that album. Uh, you're testing my memory. I, I had a couple of the guests. Of course, my lovely wife uh, is always on at least one tune on each record. So she, um, you know, showed up and showed out on that album. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, the other thing that was kind of funny too, is I was, you know, each album, I tried to do something a little different. And so that one, I was like, ah, oh, let me, let me go a little bit moodier, a little bit darker. You know, the cover has me, you know, kind of doing a pose, you know, having some attitude and then, uh, you know, so, and then of course the world shut down and I was like, man, why did I you know, make such a moody record? So I, then I did the opposite for rising up. And so when I was writing that music, I was like, let's go. Let's go bright. Let's go happy. Let's go upbeat. And uh, the music certainly uh, reflects that and, and the album cover, too. So, uh, so no, it's funny. You know, you just try to try to have a theme with each record. And um, but no, that's one I'm proud of for sure. There it is. Yeah. Congratulations on that, too. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. So that's my uh, fourth album. And we've had a couple number ones on that. We had uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, let's get down know. tonight was number yeah. one the title track as well uh rising up and uh so yeah it's been um, a lot of fun touring with that record uh and uh, i've got a great tune off of there uh that my uh, wife sang as well uh tell me you love me originally done by demi lovato and so we uh yeah, that's right. re rearranged that and so that and the title track have been staples um throughout uh this past touring year uh, both have been um, fan favorite songs, and uh, and then the song that just went number one. Uh, I'm going to be performing it on the Christmas tour. So obviously, we're going to do a ton of Christmas music, but we're also going to throw in a few originals. And uh, since we're on tour, uh, look at that screen. It's like what? The? Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, yeah. bills keep coming. Bills it's keep incredible. Coming. Yeah, so, it's incredible. Congratulations yeah. on that with the tour. It's the rising up tour the rising really up cool. tour yeah yeah what can people been... expect well um this saturday in norfolk that'll be um my last solo show uh before the christmas tour so that'll be uh, a lot of my original music and then also uh, um i throw in a few uh, of my favorite um uh, covers as well from um you know a lot of artists from stevie wonder to uh, earth wind and fire to the gap band to um the the uh previously mentioned Demi Lovato tune with my wife. So we really run the gamut. Um, I like to do 
you know, we have feel good music. We've got um, intimate moments. We've got a couple ballads. And then by the end of the show, we usually whip everybody into a frenzy and, um, you know, get people up dancing and, and have a party. So, uh, you know, that's really important to me. I want to hit all of the, um, the facets of uh, what makes a great show. So that's what, what's going to happen this Saturday and, uh, and on um, the rest of my solo shows at, right after that. I'm very excited. I'm going into rehearsals with uh, Mindy and and uh, Vincent and Lindsay, and uh, we're going to be putting a show together. And uh, it's a collaborative wow. show. We're all bringing our material in. Uh, we all picked a couple Christmas songs. We all picked a couple original songs. And then also we're going to do some medleys, Christmas medleys as well. So I would say the show is probably, you know, 70, 30, 70 Christmas 30% original. And um, so, yeah, we go into rehearsals the day after Thanksgiving, put the show together um, for three days. And then uh, then we our first show is here in SoCal. And then we head out back east. And, uh, yeah, we'll be going uh, all the way until December 23rd is our last show in uh, Fresno, California. So that's incredible, huh? Yeah. Do you have a preference from – you know, being out there on tour and on stage performing versus doing the work that you do in the studio, you know, producing and and creating all the beautiful art that you do through your music. Do you have a preference? Do you enjoy out on stage or do you prefer being in the studio? Well, I really enjoy both. Uh, you know, they're very different. Uh, nothing beats the the thrill of a live audience and and the interaction um, and every show is different even, even if it's the same set of music um, the circumstances are already different are, are you in an intimate club is it a is it a festival is it a theater um, so there's there's nothing that beats that but of course you know you've got the travel that goes with that so when you go out to do a show you know, for instance, this weekend, uh, we're going to do a 90 minute show, but it's going to take us three days to do it with travel, you know, flying to from uh, the West Coast to the East Coast and uh, and whatnot. So that's the plus side to um, to being in the studio is uh, and my studio is in my home. So I just walk yeah. 15 feet and I'm uh, <laughs> making music, but they go there. they really go together. You, you know, I, I I don't ever see myself picking one over the other because me being on the road is what, um, you know, you, you release a record and then you've got to tour it. You've got to bring the music to the people. And so they're both necessary. You know, me going out and touring is what allows me to come back and be confident that I can put out another record and there's going to be people um, uh, waiting for it in anticipation. And then same thing with me producing for other artists. Um, a lot of that comes from word of mouth. It's me being out again, touring meeting other artists at, at different events and then them, you know, just ask me, Hey, you know, can you do uh, do some music for me? So all of it, um, it, it it's really a, it, it's a, it's cyclical and it, and it all feeds into each other and it's all necessary, you know? So the better you do in the studio, the easier it is to get shows, you know, the more shows you do, then it's easier to do it radio. And then in terms right. of my production business, you know, the, you, you, more visibility is never a bad thing. You know? Exactly right. Uh, how many different guitars do you play, Adam? Well, I own. I've lost count. I need to count. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's thirty-five. I guess uh, it's a lot, folks. <laughs> yeah, I, but on the yeah. on the regular, uh, I mean, the one you'll see me play the most is this uh, is this Paul Reed Smith here. Uh, I'm endorsed with them since uh, since I was with Jennifer Lopez in 2012. So this is one of the guitars from that tour. So, yeah, so this is what I use on my own shows and on my records. Um, but other than that, if I'm recording, um, I've got a, a Fender, uh, or a, a, it's a Strat style guitar from Sir that I use quite a bit. Um, I've got a, a Martin acoustic that I'll use from time to time. Uh, and then I've got a, a, a bass. Um, it's a Marcus Miller signature bass that I use um, on demos quite a bit. And, um, I'm looking over here at the guitars here. Uh, and, oh, and then I have a Telecaster that I use um, fairly often. And uh, so, yeah, I would say there's about six that really actually are in rotation. And I could probably sell the other 29 and, and not miss them for, <laughs> for, for, quite, for maybe several years until yeah. that moment that session comes up where, oh, I need the 12 string or, I oh, I need the, one. Uh, <clears> you <throat> know. And then a lot of them are, or I need the nylon string or whatever it is. But a lot of them are doubles. 
you know yeah. when, when you're on tour especially with a with a big artist um you know you need duplicates uh in case uh a guitar goes down your guitar tech can just hand you something else um and the show just keeps going you know right so you know i've got several guitars that i have two or three of um, so maybe over time, you know, I might shed a couple of those. I actually did a big cleansing, but it was more, um, gear. It was guitar pedals, um, uh, effect pedals and that type of stuff. I had probably 150 effect pedals, you know, distortion, fuzz, wah, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Delay. So I, uh, I shed a bunch of those during the shutdown and, uh, it was good that I, I, you know, freed up a little bit of space, but then I bought like four or five guitars so i i don't think i helped <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like shirts to go out to come back in <laughs> to go out five come in five yeah. come in right exactly. yeah so i don't I'm know about you great. yeah uh, i'm not i'm not doing go very good with that with that <laughs> oh go ahead I, sorry me me neither i mean i i identify i think we're kindred spirits in that effect adam because you know what it's like now you know with the holiday shopping you go shopping for everybody else and then if you're in you know the store and you're in the men's department and you're like okay this one is for this one this one's for that right. one we got to get some things for this one but then you're like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> i kind of like that one maybe that should be for me and then the other one they'll get that one or or i'll get something for me while i'm supposed to be shopping for other family <laughs> members and friends you know what i mean it was like what <laughs> Yeah, I ha I have a bit of a wardrobe uh, surplus as well, uh, you know. So I definitely could do some cleansing there. Uh, but you know, yeah. it's mostly it's mostly show clothes. Uh, my day to day clothes is, yeah. is very pedestrian. I, Casual, I really, comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but, the but other for, stuff that has to. Yeah, for the yeah. stage, you know, I, I got to have options, and then it depends on the time of year. If it's summertime outdoor, it's going to be hot. You know, I've, I've got to have kind of a set of clothes for that. Usually it'll be a nice, you know, button down. But if, if it's more, more often than not, I usually am wearing a jacket or a blazer. Um, and it, it's just as long as I'm not going to, you know, sweat, sweat myself out and pass out. So, uh, I'm so yeah, the I need a winter coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. And then, and then this Christmas tour coming out, we're doing suits, you know? So, um, so that's, nice. a, that's yeah. another set of wardrobe. So, uh, you know, it yeah. just keeps, it just keeps expanding. So keeps expanding. <laughs> and congratulations on this too, Adam. I mean, four on the charts there. This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for pulling this up. Yeah. This was yeah. from, let's see, this was in October. Yeah. So we actually added one more. So we've got five on billboard right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, another song came out, a uh, song from Blake Aaron that I produced. So that just debuted. So that's, a, I think that's up to 23. That's so incredible. no, I, I feel, I feel really fortunate. Um, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and um, yeah, I have eight songs on the radio right now on jazz radio and five in the top 30 on the charts. So you ever uh, work with uh, somebody that I know that um, I've known personally for a while, Jay Rowe, you ever work with Jay Rowe? Of course. Yeah. Jay is fantastic. Great. Yes, artist, great um, piano player. Coast. And yeah, uh, yeah he, uh, we last played together at Seabreeze and he saved the day our keyboard player got food poisoning and he sight read my show um you know with no warning got a hold of him that morning hey can you you know and he was there he was playing with another artist and he literally he pulled up the charts and and, and just did incredible it. He did that, a fantastic job yeah and then he's done my show a couple of the times i know we did a festival in waterbury uh where he was able to come and do my show um and maybe one other. So no, Jay is fantastic. What a great player. He really is amazing. Absolutely. Uh, on so many different levels, as are you gang. If you haven't heard uh, Adam's music, it, once you hear it, he's got you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> he's, it. <laughs> he's got you. you. You're just, you know, just watching you do your thing too. You know, the videos and things oh. that nature is just really absolutely awesome. You're so like, what happens to you? Sometimes I'll ask guests this, are you, in a zone are you floating on a cloud when you're doing your thing like playing on stage what have you are you transported to another time and place what happens to you inside yeah it, well it depends on the song there's certainly some songs that are near and dear to me especially when i play rain 
which is a SWV cover um, originally written by Jaco Pastoria. So that's a very powerful song, and I'm usually getting lost uh, in myself on that one. But honestly, a lot of the songs, I'm actually thinking about the the audience and the fan experience. You know, I just really want them um, to come away from the show feeling like, you know, they got their money's worth and had a great experience. So I'm often thinking about uh, uh, connecting with them and, and uh, you know, making sure that, um, you know, we're, uh, we're vibing with each other, uh, basically. And uh, so guitar often is one of the, it's a little bit lower on the list, um, not because it's not important, but, uh, you know, I play so much guitar. Yeah. A lot of the songs tend to happen. They're kind of under my fingers. They kind of happen automatically. And I'm really thinking about, number one, the audience. And then number two, the band, um, you know, just making sure um, if I need to make cues, let people, you know, let people know, hey, we're going on to the next section or, or what have you. But also just connecting with the band um, uh, in terms of just, you know, that, again, we're vibing with each other, you know, walking over and hanging out with the keyboard player, you know, smiling. I just like having a good time and and having us come together and make a sound instead of just playing the notes like, you know, let's gel and, and really have an experience on stage, but also for the audience. And, uh, you know, so I'm always walking around, hanging out, hanging out with the yeah. keyboard player, hanging out with the bass player. You know, when my wife comes out and sings, we're, we're vibing with each other working the stage and uh and i really picked that up from and and this is this is no um you know knock on some of the unbelievable artists that just stand there and just deliver because there's some people they could do that you know miles yeah. davis or wayne shorter you know they just they're so prolific in the notes that they play that they can stand there and captivate people but you know, I spent you know a lot of time with Brian Culbertson and and uh, and Dave Cause and and I appreciated how they would combine great musicianship, but also the sense of a quote unquote show, yeah, and uh, movement and just interaction and and um, and uh, so to me, that's the sweet spot. Is yes, definitely. Let's keep the musicality extremely high. Have you know great players on stage, great music to play, but then also you know, visually, uh, you know, I'm not coming out of the ceiling or anything like that, but just, you know, <laughs> just going around, going over to, you know, all the way to the corner of the front of the stage and and play to that person for a little bit. And then, and then the center and then to the right. And, you know, and, and depending on if I can get out into the audience, I'll often go out and, and have a little fun and, and, uh, got my guitar wireless. So, you know, I'll go out there and, and uh, mess with some people for for a little bit and uh all of the above you know i mean those are the shows as a fan that i really enjoy mm -hmm. and so you know i take a little bit from the artists that i uh admire um uh, and uh you know take a little piece from oh i really dug that okay let me do you know let me see if i can incorporate that concept in my show so uh, yeah it's a little bit of all of the above you know who does that too? And I was, I forgot that he did it because we were at an event, a big gala event. And he was the, uh, he was the act that was brought in because he knew the family for the gala event. Uh, unbelievable show. And he was all over the stage and he actually somehow was able to jump off the stage. And then he jumped up on one of the chairs, <laughs> one of the theater chairs, Kenny Loggins. Oh yeah, well, there's a great example. Unbelievable singer, unbelievable repertoire. But then, yeah, he's he's putting on a show. The show, you know? right? Yeah, I've actually never seen him live, but I'm a huge fan of his music. I mean, I've poured, especially uh, this is it. That's a song I've listened to. The yeah. live version from Live uh, in the yeah. Redwoods. I've listened to that version on repeat over and over and over. I'm a big big fan of Kenny. So uh, now, yeah. did you uh, are you a fan of or have any? Um you know, intertwining with Spyro Gyra, the Yellow Jackets, the Ripping Tins, all of those legendary groups as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see, you said Spyro Gyra. So um, I, uh, uh, at the Mallorca Jazz Festival in 2017, uh, I opened for them. And, Did you really? Uh, wow. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, actually, that, that might be selling myself a little bit short. We both did. It wasn't like I did. 20 minutes and got the heck out of the way we both oh, did were. 90 it was a you know double feature so i did 90 they did 90 
That's but, incredible. Um, Double they, billing. <laughs> they were so gracious, especially yeah. – uh, well, all of them. I, I, yeah. I got to meet all of them after my show, and then I watched their show and hung out a little bit afterwards. Sweethearts. And so since then, we ran into each other many times after that. Um, so, yeah, they're fantastic. You mentioned the Yellow Jacket. So I actually studied piano with Russell Ferrante when I was in college. Did you really? I studied with him for two semesters, and that was incredible. We worked together on campus, but then I also got to go out to his place a few times. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the lessons were the same, but there was something about being in his studio, and he had just a massive library of music. It's that you could just, you could, music was in the air. There's something about, mm -hmm. his, you know, going out to his place. And uh, so that that was pretty cool. And um, their original drummer, Ricky Lawson, I worked with him quite a bit before he passed away the last couple of years of his life. Yeah. Um, and then Jimmy Haslip worked with him uh, a bit in L.A. as well. And then let's see, you said the Rippingtons. Um, I just know some of their uh, former members and have worked with them. Jeff Cashua, we've worked together before. Brandon Fields, we worked together. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, as I said, so I, many I, greats, right? Chick Corea, Jeff Lorber. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a White. student. Yeah, I'm a student of the of the uh, genre and uh, and an active artist in the genre. But I'm a fan too. I mean, I genuinely, you know, it wasn't a calculated. Oh, I'm a guitar player, so let's do this. You know, I was listening to all of this music, all of it. Um, well, it's great before, community, right? It's, oh yeah, all, you know, it's like a tight community. Everybody sort of roots for each other, looks out for one another. Yeah. Yeah, which doesn't well, always happen, you know, in, in industries or in business, but it seems to there. And you mentioned Peter White. He um, we haven't performed that much together, but uh, we always see each other and he's a sweetheart. What yeah. I always remember about him is we performed um, kind of similar circumstances. Uh, since I mentioned with Spyro Gyra, we, it was a double bill at the um, Catalina Jazz Festival um, in Catalina Island here in, in California. And uh I left my tuner and three months later, he comes up to me. Hey, you left this in Catalina. <laughs> he had hung on to it that entire time. I mean, Hoping he could have called, called me within that three months, but no, <laughs> he just, you know, I don't know if he wanted to surprise me, but I was like, that's, you know, Peter's a good guy. You know, I don't care what anyone says about you. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but, but the, the whole, uh, you're exactly right. The whole community of this genre is, um, is just fantastic and very supportive and a lot of collaboration and yeah uh, yeah it's, it's been yeah. a lot of fun it's been great i met dave Kaz at a couple of events which were wonderful he couldn't be more than gracious and uh david benoit another oh yeah yeah uh really fantastic and of course grusin and there's yeah. so many you know and they they have mingled into other areas too uh still staying in this you know genre but have worked on other things too which i think is is fantastic you know the world is your oyster you can really get involved in a lot of other stuff uh yeah. which i think is awesome do you what are some other you know genres that you dip into outside the smooth jazz world well as an artist that's what i'm doing um uh, in terms of production i'm doing everything i mean i'm working with vocalists doing do. um, r&b yeah. gospel straight ahead uh, probably I do music finished. for commercials documentaries films yeah, I've, right film I've scores quite a, quite a lot of that um i just finished um some music for an artist that was much more it was actually kind of retro like 80s 90s um rock uh kind of a la you know uh i guess soft rock a la kenny loggins it was actually very similar to that's funny you mentioned that so uh yeah it's been incredible uh just uh getting to just delve into these just different genres. I did a lot of that when I was a guitarist to all these different artists touring from, I mean, you know, you look at this, the, the, the whole spectrum going from, you know, Manhattan Transfer, Natalie Cole's kind of over here, all the way to the pop world, uh, Backstreet Boys, you know, Natalie Cole, and then R&B with uh, Layla Hathaway and, and uh, Ruben Studdard and uh, Josh Stone. So um, similarly in uh, in production, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. I played on um, on the the soundtrack for oh, I, the name of the movie escapes me, but it was on Amazon Prime. It was about um, Sam Cooke. It just came out not that long ago. Oh, so yeah. um, that's You're something that I just. Too? Yeah, wow. I just played on played on the soundtrack on that for a couple songs. Uh, in terms you said of the Backstreet Boys, you worked with them too. 
Yeah. So uh, they're on their you know, sort of 20, what is it? The 20th reunion right now or their anniversary tour. I think they're on or something. So in fact, they just called London? me. Yeah. They just called me to do some work with them and I had to turn it down because I'm doing this Christmas tour. So uh, I literally just turned down a call oh, from them yeah. a week ago. When that happens. It's to the world's merge. You're like, ah, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it's, but it's a uh, well, no, it's I, a I, nice I, spot I, to be in, right? Yeah, no, no, it's a good thing. I mean, to have options is is, uh, but I made a commitment yeah. that even um, even when I was doing a bit of both, um, as soon as my album came out and and hit, and I saw that there was potential here, from that moment forth, I I made a commitment to myself. I'm not turning down any uh, solo show for you know something that's not related to my artist career and uh, and I, because i had seen um over the years artists that had done that and it never served them well you know even if they were turning it down to go be featured in something still the stigma of okay this guy cancels shows and he's not um 100 percent committed on furthering his artist career um and, and all the artists up. And, yeah, yeah, all of the artists that have done that over the years are, you know, lag have lagged behind really where they should be. And so I've turned down quite a lot of um, big opportunities. Um, I got an offer from Ricky Minor to be music director for uh, for a big Christmas special back in 2017. I had to turn that down. Um, all sorts of stuff. You know, the, the, the Backstreet Boys um, thing that just came around. Um, Brian McKnight, I had to leave that tour because my shows were coming up. Mm. Um, and it's been the right decision because at first it was like uh, also a tour with Dave Cause I had to turn down because I had some of my own shows um, scheduled. But um, at first it was painful economically. You know, what I, my, my personal shows weren't, you know, anywhere near what I would have made doing these other things. But, you know, over time, it's like the little engine that could now... Yes it's 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 uh it's it actually would be a pay cut for me to go and do some of these other things you know so uh, that's the thing <laughs> about how it. that works out huh well when you stick with it and then also when you, look, when you look at the full gamut of it's not just that show you know no, okay there's right. there's the there's the fee for that show but then there's the potential fans you can make that will come and see you for the next 30 years there's the merch you may sell at that show um there's the promoters that may see you at that show and then that will lead to further performances it's all um, of that networking and all of the right there it sort of just flows one thing leads to the next to yeah to the next. i mean you, yeah. you know every show that you do is a potential to grow your business and then exactly. if you um cancel those and go do all this over here primarily mm. for the check okay, you made that money, but that's just momentary. And then now yeah. you've lost momentum over here. So um, it was something I recognized early on. And um, like I said, it wasn't, it's, it didn't, it wasn't without any, uh, <laughs> any pain financially, but fortunately uh, it's, it's been the right decision over and over. Absolutely. Got another one here to show. It's a cool one too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the first record just yeah. the beginning. came out February 20, uh, 2016. And, uh, oh, yeah. and that picture that is that's right. Cool picture. It's right outside city hall in uh, Los Angeles downtown. And my buddy, uh, Gary Wicks, who we toured with the Manhattan transfer together for four years. He was the bass player. So we were the two people that got the gig, um, that fateful day back in 2008. And uh, he always had been uh, sort of a photog. He had a great camera and and uh, knew what That's he was so doing. Cool. And so we went downtown and took some pictures and we got the album cover. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. It's double vision. And then, yeah, that was the second album. Um and, uh, you know, that's an album that was special to me because uh, it felt like it it solidified that I was here and yeah. for real. Right. Because you know? a lot of people, um, I mean, having a great first record, that's fantastic. But we've seen over the years, you know, across genres, the sophomore slump and not being able to back it up and you know and then there's that saying you have your whole life to write your first record then you have 18 months to write your second and uh, there's a lot of truth to that and uh so i feel i felt really fortunate that my second record was was uh, quite a bit more successful 
than my first and that's saying a lot the first to you know um was really good to me but um but yeah that second record uh, did really well um had some incredible guests on that too dave cause was on that album uh marcus anderson um uh, darren ron uh, let me think who else was on there great names uh, yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm leaving out a couple people but uh but yeah that was a big record and there's a couple songs off that record that i still play in every show um and uh you know, you just, uh, they're necessary. If I don't play them, then I, then I hear, I hear from somebody. <laughs> they become staples, right? Exactly. Staples. Yeah, exactly. Do you, is there a couple of songs that are yours that are your personal favorites? And they don't necessarily need to be the ones that fans and the consumers of the material mm. find their favorite, and maybe they are, but are there are a few that are just, they are yours. You just love those particular ones the most. Yeah, for sure. Well, of course, I've got a ton of affinity for my first single. That's a song I wrote back in 2005. And back then, it did not sound like it was worthy of being on the radio. And, and that was one of the songs I spent 10 years figuring out how to make properly. So, you know, that first single, 35th Street, has got a lot of, uh, you know, I've got a lot of affinity to that. Um, but, you know, on, on the new record, there's some, you know, I really tried to stretch out. And um, I've got a song in there that's that's kind of, I was going for the um, the kind of '90s contemporary jazz sound, a kind of a throwback to to Norman Brown and some of those other artists, and uh, you know, and uh, that's a tune called "On the One," and uh, that's my wife's favorite off the new record, and it's one of my favorites too. Um, it was kind of fun because I I had a vision of you know, let me see if I can capture that, you know. Uh, uh, contemporary jazz a la 1995 type mm -hmm. of thing and yeah. uh and with everything the um the synthesizers that i used and the groove and the playing style uh you know it just kind of took me back to uh you know i remember particularly there was a summer that i stayed in la i didn't go back home and i just shed i was just in the woodshed the entire summer listening to contemporary jazz transcribing solos uh, learning songs and uh you know that's a a, a vivid uh, memory in my brain and uh, i can see myself sitting on the couch in that apartment and it's hot and the air conditioner doesn't work but i'm listening right. to norman brown and and will downing and kirk whalem all these records and um and uh so so that's that was kind of a fun song off the new record that um you know kind of did a snapshot back to uh to that era that's incredible. You, uh, I mean, you, you're very grateful. You count your blessings every day, I know. And uh, you just, I'm sure you just wake up sometimes and look at the ceiling and say, wow, is this really happening? This is really incredible. Because so many cool things, and again, it's very exciting to see this progression of the career, so many cool things happening. And sometimes even to the point, like you say, where a lot of cool things are happening, but they're happening all at the same time. And you have to sort of work out, okay, the priorities and put it all together. How do you manage it all? How are you able to, you know, I'm sure, you know, of course, your wife is there and you're, you're, you know, working with each other. How do you manage it? And what are some of those continued blessings and joys that keep you moving forward? Yeah. I mean, the main thing is um, I, I used to be on more of a kind of a musician entertainer schedule, staying up all hours of the night and, and um, I, I would just find it, I wasn't as productive. And I have to actually credit my son for this is when he started going to school, which would have been, let's see, he was born in 2008. So uh, uh, 2014, started taking him to, to kindergarten. And um, I was just finding if, you know, if I slept until the moment I had to take him to school and then went to the gym yeah. and then came home and had breakfast. Now it's 11. It's almost time for lunch. It's like the day yeah. is gone. Just flipped by. Yeah. So I started waking up at uh, five and I've been doing that now, um, you know, seven or eight years. And honestly, that's really what it is, is I get up early, work out, take my son to school. Then I'm in front of the computer by eight, eight thirty. And then I'll usually work till six and maybe later if, if my son's at practice, um, yeah, I, I'll take advantage of that. Yesterday I was, I was on the computer till about nine. Um, so, you know, I put in 13 hours yesterday. Today is going to be about the same. So if you do that, you know, five days a week, uh, year over year, 
um, then, um, you know, you can, you can accomplish some things. So I, I never felt I was particularly, uh, brilliant or naturally talented. Honestly, it's just been a lot of work, um, hard work and persistence and kind of seeing, okay, I have a goal. So that means, you know, um, I've got to work towards it over time. For instance, right now I'm working on a, on a holiday record that's going to come out at the end of 23 and then a, another regular record that's going to come out in early 24. So that's been on my calendar already for a year. And I've been chipping away at it a little bit at a time, you know, and then a week ago I was like, Oh, let me, let's see where these Christmas songs are coming for the album that's coming out in a year. And so I opened up all the sessions, took a list. Okay, this is great. This is perfect. We just need to track that. Okay, this one, I don't know about this. I got to rework that. Same with my record that's coming after that in a year and a half. I'm always setting songs aside. And um, and then same thing with the artists I'm working with. I've got a whiteboard up on the up on the wall. I've got all the artists I'm working with, what their deadlines are. And same thing. It's like, okay, if I can kind of look at my schedule, okay, this is going to be busy. I'm going to be on the road. So let me front load. Let me get some of these projects done early. Oh, it doesn't need to be done for three months, but I need to finish it in uh, two months early so yeah. that there's not a crunch. And then I'm, I'm at risk of missing people's deadlines, you know? Right. So I'm in the middle of that right now. I've got until Thanksgiving day to finish up some projects for some different people I'm working on. So I've been telling people, anyone that'll listen, Hey, Thanksgiving Day to Christmas Day, I'm out. So we either got to get it done before that or after. So everyone's been apprised. The people that have hard deadlines, those are the people I'm prioritizing right now. I'm going to knock off their projects in the next eight days, and then I'll be on the road. And then already, I was on the phone with somebody this morning. I said, hey, December 26th, I'm, I'm already got in my schedule. I'll be in, I've got a mix I'm going to do December 26th. And uh, so let's talk that day and we can get started on your next song. So, uh, you know, it's just a lot of that. Uh, me yeah. opening up my iCal and just kind of uh, 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 taking appraisal of, of what's coming up and, and what's how can I get it. Yeah. How can I get a jump start on it? Exactly. That's why I said at the beginning, it was good. We saw this little window here before yeah. <laughs> you start that. <laughs> I exactly. said, let me take a look at the tour schedule and other things <laughs> and see what would work because there's all of this prior and then all of this coming up right here, right now. Grab it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, you are in front of lots of beautiful uh, technology there. As much a guitarist, like you said earlier when we were chatting, piano too, huh? Yeah. So the amount of time I actually play the guitar is very little at this point. Uh, it's still my first love, but most of the time I'm, I'm on the keyboard or uh, even more so I'm editing and programming and, and, uh, and mixing is actually what I spend most of the time doing or, or on the phone. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, piano was my first instrument. So I've been playing that since eight and uh you know and it's what a fantastic instrument especially it depends on what you're doing too but yeah. even though i'm a guitar artist the music of contemporary jazz of contemporary jazz tends to start on the piano you know, yes. in terms of the harmony you're going to yeah. have a lot of at least the music i write is going to have a lot of keyboards you know we're going to have roads piano strings pads bells so you know there may be 10 tracks of keyboards and maybe you know, uh, one lead guitar and maybe a few rhythm guitars, but, um, that's the other flute reason in there sometimes too. What was that? Some flute in there sometimes too. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. actually working with some great flute players, uh, right now. And, uh, and then also sometimes all Nestor, right? Nestor. Yeah. We haven't yeah. worked together, but he is incredible oh, from incredible. Puerto Rico. Yeah. yeah. Very Nestor talented. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I got a lot of his stuff. You just listen to that and you're like, whew, incredible. Yeah. Speaking of that, you wanted to play some stuff for us huh? while you're there. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like I've got uh, iPads up and running. It was updating, but we're uh, looks like we're good to go. So yeah, I just got to figure Perfect. out. Perfect. Excellent. I didn't, I didn't think about what I was going to do. Well, you know what? Actually, what might be nice, I could play that song I was talking about the uh, the new song yeah. off uh, off of the uh, the most recent record on the one. And like I said, this is a it's an homage to. Um, to uh 90s early 2000s contemporary jazz and uh awesome here, let me let me grab my guitar 
and it's all updated, all good to go. We were waiting for the you know, technology to. Update. It's gonna sound. It's gonna sound even better. <laughs> yeah. The iPad. <laughs> the iPad's got the new operating system, so the track is cool. gonna sound even even more better. <laughs> it's always great when our systems like to update when I'm live on the air. It's like, wait, no. <laughs> Oh, don't remind don't, me later. Don't get me started. Like, yeah, me with later. my yeah. um, yeah, with oh my, my Facebook God. show. You know, like, I, yeah, 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 I do a show every um, <laughs> every Wednesday. Uh, and uh, yeah, you name it, it's happened. Computer shut down, right. started updating. Uh, um, or this computer yeah, rebooting. I'm like, no, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> or my my real pet peeve is this computer behind me. I don't really see it during the course, but of the episode. But then when um. When I go back and look at it and then, you know, all I want is for my album covers to just flip through like that on the slideshow. And then I'll go back and look at the episode and some warning screen has popped up. It's like, man. It's it's like, and you don't see it because you're looking towards this direction. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. You We've know, had spent, that. We've had where the monitor behind me goes black. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what has happened here? You know, it's funny. Oh, yeah. Well, I All think right. I'm ready. Let's give let's give this a shot. So this is the called the comparable uh, Adam Hawley here on the Jim Masters show. This is cool. On the one. Here we go. All right. Thank you. 
So fantastic. It does take you back, right? It does take you straight yeah, back. That's such know. a great sound, too. I loved that sound during that time, you know? Yeah, I was going for a little 1995. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great, great sound. That's oh, awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, you know, it's interesting just watching you. Uh, what do you do to prepare uh, physically? Like if you're going to be, you know, sometimes people forget the the physicality to what you're doing, especially when you're whether you're recording or you're on stage, you know, you're constantly moving the shoulders, the arms, the fingers, the wrists. Is there any prep that you do to get the hands and everything ready when you're going to be doing it for quite some time? You know, it, it's actually more so just having a base level of, um, of uh, exercise um, and, and just that regimen of stretching cardio. So I make sure to do a little bit of that every day. And that's actually been the biggest help to me as opposed to, I also had at different times tried warm up routines, practice routines, stretching, and I actually had more issues then. Um, I'm finding now it's more so, uh, not introducing more hours of playing, that is, hasn't been as useful to me, you know, it, it, yeah, you're warming up, but you're also using the hands more too. So I'm finding, you know, I don't necessarily need to play less. I still play as much as I need to, but, um, I'm actually better served more just doing a general taking care of the body, staying hydrated. And then also because, um, you know, I'm sitting so much and in front of the computer, just getting up, you know, just, um, or if I'm, you know, if I'm working on, on tracking still, I'm sitting down. So just getting up, doing the opposite of what I'm doing. So if I'm sitting for several hours, stand up, stretch, move around, you know, et cetera. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a combination of all of that. Cool. Good to know. A little, a couple of tips there for you, gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I tried everything you play while you're there. What's that? Is there something else you want to play while you're there with the Oh, guitar? yeah. No, I'd, I'd be glad to do another one for you. Let me see. Um, so I need to choose from. Uh, let's see. what you know I've, got the, I've always said, you know, it's the test of a really good song is when you yeah. still hear it playing in your head. And I still yeah. hear that song in my head. Oh, I do you? Do you still hear it? Thank you. Yeah. No. I so so should I play it. that one? Should I play that one again? Is that just? No, I'm kidding. Oh, no. That, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already going. Oh, so we're, yeah, it's already going. That was a great no, song. No, I got you here. The problem is I got too many songs here. Let's see. Uh, that's incredible. It took some time. This was something that came out of the, uh, oh, I got a good one. I got one more uh, I'll do from the new record. But this is something that it was actually good that came out of the shutdown is it forced me to um, compile all of my TV tracks, all of my backing tracks, make sure they're all the same volume. I mean, there, there was like a lot of things that went into that. And then just having them all here, plus there's a whole bunch of covers too that I like to do on my 
Facebook yeah. show. And uh, so it's great now because anytime I got to do something, um, it's almost a problem of I got too many things to choose from. But at any rate, this is one more tune off the new records. What I'm proud of. I also went and tried to try to do something a little different on this. Um, so this actually is kind of circa also the 90s, but more neo soul, D'Angelo, Music Soul Child, oh, Eric yeah. Badu. So it's got some of those type of flavors. And a uh, great drummer on this, um, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he he um, has has recorded and toured with everyone from Herbie Hancock to mm. uh, Alicia Keys to Dr. Dre, and uh, you know, great uh, horn arrangement too from Donald Hayes, great saxophone player. So this is called Undeniable. All right. Thank you. 
You know, when you're really into it, you must hate when the song's coming to an end. Because I know, as the receiver of that joy, it's it's hard when the song comes to an end. Because you're like, you just so, you know, it just makes you feel alive. You know what I mean? Oh, Connected and alive, yeah. and just feel so good. You know, it's uh, 100%. it's you're, yeah, you're really something. I tell you, and it's oh. it's so cool to see all of this happening for you because i know it's um it's like a dream that you've had all these years and you've worked so hard at it adam and you've uh you know been educated and experienced and, and you've made the connections and uh people want to work with you and then you've got your time to, alone to do what you need to do and it's a like i said it's like a sweet spot to be in Definitely. Yeah. No, I, like you said, I, I, uh, I pinch myself every day and, uh, and now it's about maintaining that, but also, you know, growing. And so I definitely chart, you know, where am I at each year, the amount of performances I've done. Um, that's definitely a barometer. So, so far finger, you know, uh, uh, fingers crossed it's been, um, growth every it's year, crossed, you yeah. know, with this, with this being the, the biggest with 65, shows in 2022 so yes i'm already working on 2023 and if um you know offers are coming in there's already about i think 15 shows on the books for 2023 so you know grinding that out and uh you know and just looking for opportunities too i i just i booked a gig in pittsburgh so it's like okay you know la is far from everywhere so okay i'm in pittsburgh what's near there you know you open up the map okay columbus is not too far uh you know, Cleveland is not too far. So I called up a friend of mine I've been in touch with and uh, he's working on a show in, in Columbus. And that was all from me just looking at the map and kind of strategizing, you know. So I'm working on a Midwest, Midwest run there. And uh, that's a big part of it, too, especially being from the West Coast. We're on an island. Um, there's not too many major markets that are in driving distance. So anytime I jump on a flight and cross country, I always look at, OK, I'm, I'm going to be here. What can I do the day before the day after? And uh, yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of funny. It's actually forced me to, to explore, you know, different markets and, um, ended up coming up with some shows I probably wouldn't have had if I, if I didn't live so far away and had to economize every time I buy, I buy a plane ticket. So, uh, you know, it's funny how stuff like that works. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, the, a lot of the folks that pop through talk about how the music industry has changed greatly. And now with streaming and Spotify and all these other ways to get the music out. And one of the big things is the concerts, the performances, the merch, all of that has, it's always been important, but that's become really important now too. Um, just because of the way the industry has changed. Have you found that to be the case as well? Definitely. Um, still the number one way to support an artist is to first come to their show and then second, um, you know, grab a CD or I also have vinyl at all of my shows, my third and fourth albums we uh, we printed in vinyl. Um, so, yeah, 100 percent. That's always uh, the number one way to support a fan. But, you know, the interesting thing about streaming, not to get too nerdy with you, but you know, there, there's all of this um, kind of uh, backlash on streaming. And yeah, if we could go back 20 years and just sell CDs, that was better. However, you know, the majority of the income for streaming goes to the holder of the master. So in my case, I'm independent. I have my own record label. And so streaming is actually pretty cool. You know, I get my statements every month. I know how many streams I have. Okay, great. I've been playlisted in these playlists. And um Radio is still extremely important and and uh, a big part of my career. This is adjacent to that. There's also mm -hmm. some people that they go onto Spotify, they go to the 
play to a such and such playlist they find me on there um or they know i like this playlist and unfortunately i've been able to distinguish myself to a point where i'm in that list and so they hit play and then they hear my music in there and um that's been growing um leaps and bounds since i started i mean you look at the at the graph of listenership from when i started in 16 and it's it's going like this which i feel really fortunate for so um all of the above you know if if you're not gonna buy a record come to the show definitely jump on spotify apple music uh, amazon music and and stream me you know i'll take that too and yeah. um and there's cool things about that you know it, it's just a different experience and i have a lot of people that they <laughs> it's funny they have a newer car so they don't have a cd player they say why well, I, I want i just wanted to meet you i wanted to get a signed cd i'm going to put this on my mantle but i'm going to listen to you on spotify i say great you know so uh, it, right? <laughs> you know or they'll buy the vinyl you know and that's been a cool thing too right. is that um you know i've been able to you know have some people grab my music at the end of the show because i offered that and um and i've actually got quite a few people that their first vinyl was mine and now they've got to go get a record player you know and so i uh, still have my onkyo turntable and my double cassette deck and the yeah. receiver and the kl so you were smart you didn't you didn't just throw everything out or do it, right. it. <laughs> I stayed it yeah kept it all and i tell you when you listen to it it sounds really oh, good yeah. And it's it, it an experience. And when I'm not running, you know, like a chicken with my head cut off and just relax, especially around the holidays, there's nothing better. We, you know, uh, uh, spend some records around the fire. Um, it's an experience, you know, and we yeah, find right. ourselves watching less TV and just enjoying yeah. that or maybe playing yeah. some board games, putting on some records. Our son got really into it. We started having him DJ, pick the records, flip the records. We got a bunch of, we have some great classic records, but we also got a bunch of new records too and so that really brought him in you know we uh we had um you know some music that he was really interested in on vinyl and he just you know really really enjoyed that and uh so we have some great memories of him you know uh, playing dj and uh you know not scratch not scratching too much you know we're still trying to get him off of that but uh, <laughs> yeah you know it's hard you know when you're we were raised eight, don't scratch the records <laughs> yeah when you're eight nine years old you know trying to have him uh, handle with care but he does a pretty good job so that's so cool wow that's awesome i tell <laughs> you it's, it's really good stuff and uh congratulations on everything you know the new music the tour oh. The Thank billboard you. charting, uh, collaborations with other great artists, and just making all this great music that makes us feel so good, Adam. This really was uh, a real pleasure having you on the show and spending this time with us and uh, just wishing you nothing but you know continued blessing and joy. And uh, we will keep the porch light on for you. You are welcome back anytime, my friend. And certainly spread the word about the Jim Masters Show live series. We really appreciate that. And we Will uh, do. You know, some folks you think like to pop on, but the word everybody is uh, definitely welcome. And I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. Oh, yeah, this has been so much fun. And like you said, it was it was very conversational. Uh, you know, we got into uh, you, you, you pried several stories out that I had I hadn't even thought of, you know, things that uh, I've experienced or gone through. It, you know, so it was a lot of fun for me, too, and always great performing. So, uh, no, thanks so much for having me. It was, it was my pleasure, 100%. Uh, right back at you, adamhawley.com website. All the information is there about the tour and the music and, and everything else, folks. Catch them on Spotify and in all places you find music. Uh, all the best, uh, Adam. And there's somebody that pops in towards the latter part of the show. Just wanted to say hello. Uh, Mr. George Burns is with us. All right. All right. <laughs> How you doing, George? He always pops in. <laughs> I comes like in it. With I his like cigar. it. <laughs> He's always dapper. He comes in with all a cigar right. and his uh, red pocket square. My aunt collected dolls and it's got passed down to me through the family. She collected real serious collectible dolls. And this is <laughs> one of them. And uh, so he pops in. He said, you knocked it out of the park, kiddo. He absolutely oh, loved it. And uh, you. sends you nothing but all blessings from him and from Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated. George Burns. And he played God in the movie. So you got God on your side, which hey, is pretty hey, good. Huh? There you go. 
Can't That's beat it. it. <laughs> Adam, you're the best. Thanks for taking all this time with us. Truly, uh, we will stay in touch and uh, hope to see you at one of the concerts soon. I encourage folks to get tickets. Check the website, again, adamholly.com for more information on that, the music, everything else. And uh, you're the best. Thanks for playing for us, too. It was a real treat. My pleasure. Thanks again for having me. And uh, definitely hope to see you all out uh, this holiday season. We're coming to a city near you. Perfect. All right. Happy holidays, too. All right. Same to you. Take care. Adam Hawley here on the Gym Masters Show. Isn't that fantastic? Great gang. I tell you, a lot of great music coming your way. He truly is a gifted artist. As much a celebrated guitarist and composer, a producer extraordinaire. You heard him talk about that. Some of the incredible people he's had an opportunity to produce for and still does. Also, a, a wonderful pianist. And uh, just a wizard. And you got a chance to hear some of the fantastic music as well, which was really, really cool. We really appreciate him doing that. He's in this uh, tight window uh, between, you know, all of his projects. He even heard some of the projects he said that he's had to sort of turn away at the moment because he's so busy with everything. And his phone is just ringing. And uh, for good reason, he's a, a super talent. He cares about what he does. And uh you know, he's got an ease about him, too, doesn't he? You know, which uh, people have pretty much said I have. He's got an ease about him, which is, uh, I think, really, really cool. So cool to work with, I'm sure, with folks that are working with him on stage and uh, on set and in studio. Rising Up is uh, the latest work. Make sure you uh, pick that up, folks. And uh, this here, I tell you, this is fantastic, right? Billboard number one. Let's get down to night. That's really, really cool. And uh, the tour. I mean, just look at the amount of cities. It's extraordinary. Four, but now he's got, uh, yeah, he's got five, five that are on the Billboard chart. Really incredible. Adam Hawley is his name. Good friend of the Gym Masters show live series. Really cool to have him here. And I've been, you know, a fan of his work and very familiar with his work as well. And uh, there's actually a few people we both know. I mentioned Jay Rowe and a few others. Isn't that a cool shot too as well? Really nice. All right. He's super talented. Uh, I think he was saying something like he's got 35 guitars in uh, that home studio there. I don't doubt it. <laughs> This was really a cool show. Thanks for watching, gang, wherever you're watching around the world. I am your host, Jim Masters, and this is uh, what we do here. We are an entertainment live already talk show series, sort of bringing back the Lost Art of Conversation with guests coming in from all different backgrounds. Uh, if you commented in the uh, JMS Lovely chat room, we thank you very much for that. We appreciate that and appreciate all that love and support. You can find me as well on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Jim Masters TV. We also, uh, of course, our YouTube channel is Jim Masters TV as well. If you enjoyed this fantastic episode with our special guest, celebrated guitarist, composer, producer, and so much more, Adam Harley, give this episode a like on our YouTube channel. There's a thumbs up there. Give it a like. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well. We'd appreciate that. That means a lot to us. Actually post something on the channel. Tell us, tell us how much you enjoy the shows, the episodes, what you like about them. And uh, that means a lot to us as well. And uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't as well. Just click that red button, as we always say, and leave a, uh, you know, uh, not just hit that button, but also click the notification bell. That's important. There's a little bell. It's like shaped like a little bell. It's next to the word subscribe. If you click that, um, what that does is it lets you get notifications from us, alerts about all the episodes. So you never miss anything, which is cool. Gang, we uh, brought this back recently. We're so happy to do that. It's the relax sign. We got this when we were on vacation with family in Newport, Rhode Island. Don't forget to relax, breathe, listen to some cool, good music like Adam Harley. That'll make you feel real good. Adam's music is fantastic. Relax, gang. Uh, take it easy. Love one another. You know, take care of one another, be good to one another and relax, breathe and relax. And don't forget to love yourself. Really important to do that. You know, love yourself and be good to yourself. Take care of yourself as well. So for all of us here, Jim Masters, your host, thanking you for your time this time till next time. And if you want to see this episode again, all of the episodes are available in the archives. If you enjoyed this, 
can do super chat, super emoji, super sticker, super thanks as well. That's on our YouTube channel. And uh, again, we thank Adam for joining us. And we thank all of you for being with us here on the Gym Masters show. And um, thanks for all the comments, too. We really just appreciate that. Many more episodes of the Gym Master Show series coming up for you. One more time, we thank Adam. And we thank all of you from watching and for watching around the world. It's always uh, great to have you here. And we appreciate all the enthusiasm, sharing the links on your social media, all the messages we get. Uh, sometimes it's hard to even keep up with them, but they mean a lot. Every single one of them mean a great deal. And we thank you so much for all of us here. Uh, as we always say, we don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers, shalom, uh, sayonara, slancha, more loop, take care, be well, hasta la vista, avida zain, <laughs> and everything else we could say. Guys, be well. Take care. Thanks for being with us on this episode. And stay right here. More great episodes of the Gym Masters Show live series coming up just for you. Thanks for being with us. Be well. Oh,